Hello, everybody, and welcome to my class guide for each playstyle for Lords of the Fallen. In this video, it's just going to be super simple. We're just going to be taking a look at the beginning classes and based on the playstyle that you are trying to end up doing or the kind of playstyle that you generally enjoy, I'm going to be recommending a starting class for you. Now, of course, as usual with any kind of Souls game that starts out like this, you do not have to stick to any of these stats that you start with. You can do whatever you want. But what I'm going to recommend to you is just going to get you on your journey a little bit faster and a little bit smoother. So I'm going to start out with talking about the Paladin playstyle. This is a popular playstyle that a lot of people have, and you have multiple options to get there. The first option is going to be the Hollowed Knight that comes with 12 strength and 9 radiance. It's not a ton of radiance, but they do have a decent amount of vitality, which means your health is going to be a bit higher. So when you're looking to be a Paladin playstyle, you're wanting to take note of your strength and you're also wanting to take note of your radiance if you have a plan to go agility and radiance i do have a recommendation for that as well but specifically for what you would think of being a paladin place that would be strength and radiance hollow knight is a good option the other option is the orion preacher now this is gonna start you with a lot more radiance and 10 strength. So this is set up super well to go the Paladin route. The reason that I would choose this over the Hollowed Knight is if you wanna get using magic right away. You start with a catalyst, which allows you to cast spells. You start with a spell. So you do have a ranged option right off the bat. Now you will find ranged options throughout just playing the game, but starting with the Orion Preacher does begin you with having that ranged option right away. The other option that you could do is the Deluxe Dark Crusader class. Now I don't have this, so this is just a picture that I'm referencing for you guys. This starts with 11 Radiance and 12 strength. So that's also set up really well to go into a Paladin playstyle. Plus you start with more vitality. You start with 14, which is quite a lot of health to begin the game with. But if you do not have the Deluxe Edition, personally, I would say that the Orion Preacher, I think, is set up to do it the best. And it's going to make the beginning area a little less frustrating because you have the ranged option. But if you do want to go with the Hollow Knight and have a more sturdy shield, this shield is going to be blocking a bit more damage. So when you guard, you're going to take less of that wither gray health damage. So if that is something that you want to prioritize, I would go with the shield. But yeah, my personal overall pick would be Orion Preacher for a paladin starting class. Now, if you are wanting to go with an agility and radiance class, honestly, I would say Orion Preacher too. There's only two points between their strength and agility, and they have a lot of radiance. So if you wanna be a radiant healing, lightning thunder kind of play style, but you wanna be using the lighter weapons, I would also recommend Orion Preacher. Now we have the classic Oonga Boonga. You wanna wield the big weapons, you wanna do the big meaty blows, you're gonna wanna pick the War Wolf. This one starts with 16 strength, which is a hell of a lot of strength. You can also go with the Dark Crusader, but they start with 12 strength. But again, they do have 14 vitality. So if you're unsure as to whether you're gonna be getting hit a lot, you could just go with the Dark Crusader if you own the Deluxe Edition because you're gonna have more health to start with. But if you're going all in and you want that strength right away, the Warwolf is gonna be the one for you. And it has the bonus of starting with throwing axes. So again, this game has a lot of ranged enemies. You're gonna find ranged options as you play through the game, but if you start with the Warwolf, you are going to have a ranged option immediately. Now, if you want to be the Inferno Magic, you really only have one choice, and that is the Pyric Cultist, which starts with 18 Inferno. A lot of Inferno, and they can either go Strength or Agility. They're basically even, so you can choose whichever path you wanna go with that. I will say that if you are wanting to start with the Pyric Cultist, the beginning area is gonna be a little bit tough because not only does your magic do inferno damage and the beginning area that you're in, they're all inferno dudes, but your main weapon that you start with also has inferno damage. So when I was playing the pirate cultist, what I did is I switched to a weapon that just didn't have any inferno on it until I got to an area that wasn't full of inferno people. 
So you can do that. It's going to make your life a lot easier. And then you just have to chip away at enemies with your fireball. It's just going to take a few extra hits than if you were using a radiant spell. Now let's talk about our dexterity agility builds. You have two options to start with. The first one is going to be the black feather ranger. This is probably the best overall class. It's probably the safest because you do start with a shield compared to the exiled stalker, which we'll talk about in a moment. And you do start with bow and arrows. The axe also does a lot of damage. The Black Feather Ranger is also perfectly set up to be a ranged class. So if being a ranged player does entice you at all, I would definitely recommend the Black Feather Ranger because ranged attacks are actually good in this game. They do solid damage. The way that the ammo system works enables you to really, really play into being a ranged player. So if that does entice you, go with the Black Feather Ranger over something like the Exiled Stalker. So if dex weapons tend to be your thing, but you want to have a shield for parrying or for guarding for a little bit more extra protection and you want to start with a bow, definitely go with the Black Feather Ranger. Now, the reason that you would go for the Exiled Stalker instead in my opinion is one because you start with more agility you're starting with 16 compared to 13 so this is kind of like the warwolf right the warwolf is all in on strength whereas the dark crusader has a lot of strength but also has some other stats the exiled stalker is like that they're all in on agility and have very few other stats but if you are a fan of parrying I highly recommend the Exiled Stalker because when speaking to a developer from Hexworks, they said that Double Daggers has the largest parry window, followed by a smaller shield and then followed by a larger shield. So if you are wanting to go through this game parrying a lot, Starting with double daggers is really nice because that parry window is extremely forgiving. Now with the Black Feather Ranger, you can also of course parry still and it's not gonna be that difficult. You're using a small shield, but if the assassin rogue playstyle really speaks to you, I highly recommend the Exiled Stalker. You start with poison salts, so you're kind of already going in on those status effects. So that would be my recommendation if you wanna parry and you wanna be a rogue. And if you want to maybe stand back, be a ranged class, have a little bit more protection with your shield, but still build into agility, I would recommend the Black Feather Ranger. Both of these start with a ranged option. Black Feather Ranger has a bow, Exiled Stalker has a throwing knife. So neither of these are really gonna struggle when it comes to picking off enemies at range. Just keep in mind, if you wanna parry, I'm telling you, man, the double daggers, just trust me, try the double daggers. <laughs> Now, the Partisan and the Mornstead Infantry are what I would say are the best overall kind of classes. If you're not totally sure if you want to go strength or you want to go agility, or maybe you just want to have a slightly higher starting stat so that if you do happen to pick up a strength weapon, you can use that. Or if you pick up an agility weapon, you can use that. You can go with the Partisan or the Mornstead Infantry. Now, the Partisan starts with more strength, but again, 13 strength compared to 12 agility. There's really not much difference there. You do start with a crossbow and you have a larger shield, so your guarding is going to be a little bit better and your ranged option is going to be great because the crossbow is super good. The Mornstead infantry starts more on the agility side with 12 strength and 14 agility so it's a little bit better set up to go into agility and this one you start with a smaller shield good for parrying and you start with a javelin that you can throw. Now the throwing javelin is also pretty good but the crossbow is definitely better when it comes to range so if you are someone who wants to kind of spec into a bunch of different things, try out all the weapons at your disposal, or you're just not really sure if you want to go all the way into strength or agility, these are going to be really good for you. And I would just say the difference is that if you're with the partisan, parrying is going to be a little bit slower because that shield is bigger. If you're with the infantry, parrying is going to be a little bit easier because the shield is smaller. And then the partisan is set up for strength a little bit better and the Mornstead infantry is set up for agility a little bit better but they are quite similar now the condemned dude the condemned this armor you can find all of this armor and all of these weapons in the game as you play through i've played with all of the armor and the bucket and the bucket is really good it has poison damage on it so you're going to be able to poison enemies the armor in the very early game had some of the best stats on it i don't 
It says pick at your own risk. And yes, you do of course start with less stats. You're starting with nine in everything instead of hitting these numbers like 18, 11, 12, 14. You're definitely starting with less stats, but you are gonna level up quite quickly. So if you do feel like you maybe wanna give it a bit of a try, I would say out of all Souls games, the Condemned is the easiest to start out of all of these kind of start with no stats, start with no weapons <laughs> classes. I think that this is the easier one. And I would actually say that starting as the Condemned is a little bit easier than starting as the Pirate Cultist, because again, your weapon and your magic, the enemies are not immune to it, but they're definitely resistant. Whereas the Condemned has a bucket, <laughs> which you dual wield, which is really good. And your starting armor is pretty good too. You just don't have a ton of stats. Now, if you are someone who wants to go into the Umbral Magic, which they don't actually have a class that's just purely set up to go into Umbral Magic. Umbral Magic is Lords of the Fallen's version of kind of dark magic, where you wanna have equal Radiance and equal Inferno to wield this kind of mixture of being good and bad. Now in Umbral Magic, they have stuff like poison. They also have things like wither damage. It's all that kind of stuff. Now you can start as the Orion Preacher or the Pirate Cultist, and as you level up, you can just put points into the other one. So if you start the Orion Preacher, as you're leveling up, you put points into Inferno. And if you're the, doing the Cultist, obviously you do it the other way around. Now, I did say that starting as the cultist is a little bit more difficult. So if you want to have an easier time, I would recommend starting as the preacher and then just start leveling your inferno. But this armor is super sick, so I get why you would want to start as the pirate cultist. <laughs> I'm actually starting to craft a build on my Exiled Stalker that specializes in Umbral to buff my weapons with poison and just have general poison abilities. I'm trying to be a poison rogue. I'm trying really hard. <laughs> so I'm actually starting to do that where I'm leveling Radiance and Inferno equally now. But if you want to be a pure spell caster when it comes to Umbral Magic, you want to do the creepy spells where you're dropping bodies on people and shooting all kind of weird stuff everywhere, I would recommend the Orion Preacher or the Pirate Cultist. And I would personally recommend the Orion Preacher because you're going to have a little bit of a, an easier time starting out in the game. So I personally started as the Exiled Stalker. I love parrying. I also love being a rogue and a ninja, and I like dealing in like poison and bleed and stuff like that. Exiled Stalker seemed perfect for that. It says that it's an advanced class, but I really don't see why. <laughs> I know that you're obviously starting with more points in agility than something like vitality than some of the other classes, but with how generous the parry window is with double daggers, and the ability to have a ranged option, I think this class is fantastic. So there it is. Let me know in the comments section which class you ended up choosing for your playstyle. Then we can all kind of go to the comments and see if there's a playstyle that one of you is playing that I didn't think about, as I'm sure there is, because there's billions. I just mentioned the more popular ones. Please let me know what you think of the game. Stay tuned for more videos on Lords of the Fallen. And of course, stop by the Twitch stream to watch me play through it live and die a lot and get very 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 lost <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching bye